Hey, good morning, guys. Um, so, I don't know, a few months back, uh, my wife asked me, uh, hey, do you know Matt? You know a guy named Matt Frad? And I was like, yeah, why? And I'm thinking, did he send me an email? How cool would that be? <laughs> I said, I said, why? She said, well, I want to learn the rosary. And uh, I see, I looked up good books and uh, he has a book on learning the rosary. I said, yeah, no, he's awesome. Definitely. Yeah, definitely get him. Yeah, don't be afraid of that guy. And I said, in fact, my kids had just um, got me a bunch of gift cards. I think it was around Father's Day. And I had ordered like 10 books that I had in my cart. Uh, and one of them was Matt Frad's How to Be Happy. And, you know, he talks, you know, gives um, advice from St. Thomas Aquinas. And I, so I grabbed the book and uh, I said, yeah, yeah, this it's this guy. And um, it's funny because I had like 10 books and I, I was like, I think that was going to be the first one I read. And um, and then like the next day I'm looking for it and I see it on her desk with a bookmark. I'm like, oh, you're reading this book? She's like, yeah. I said, okay. So I got to ask her if she ever finished reading it because I never, I didn't ever get it back, come to think of it. But I had some, I had Scott Hahn's new book. Uh, I had Peter Criff's new book. I, I had a lot of, a lot of good books. So it wasn't like I didn't have anything to read, but um but you know me, so I'm telling her the history of the rosary and how cool it is and you know how it's a spiritual weapon for us and um and you know I'm, I'm telling you I said yeah you know I've read stories of like women and men in their you know late nineties that you know have dementia and Alzheimer's but they can remember the rosary. And I said, I think that the church knew, God had given the, the, the wisdom to the church to know like we're body, soul, and spirit. So it's like the Catholic church, we do everything. It's not just um, spiritual. We get the physical involved, you know, because that's what Jesus did. You know, he gave us himself in the Eucharist and because uh, he knew we were physical beings i said so when you you know you're using a rosary it's it i think it does something scientifically um uh, to your brain that you can remember it so people that you know are in their 90s can't remember anything can remember and say the rosary i said how beautiful is that you know and you know when i interviewed uh steve ray you know he grew up a baptist his mom's like 100 years old and still a baptist and he said you know if she was catholic you know even though she's a you know she she can't get around and she can't do what she used to she was catholic there was there's so much she could do now he just you know wishes that she was catholic so you know i'm telling all this you know me I'm, i know every little detail <laughs> and she says she says oh you know the rosary and i was like well i know about the rosary uh and she's like man i think you should really learn the rosary and i go yeah 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 i you know i plan to and um it's kind of funny because um you know right after that uh i went to look up so i, I said you know because i kind of forgot i'm like oh yeah Matt Fry, what's he been up to i haven't you know watched any of his stuff lately and i go up and there was a a comment i forget what he was talking about but there was a comment on his youtube video and the woman said i'm surprised you didn't know about such and such i, I can't even remember what it was and uh matt frat replied with the funniest comment i ever heard he's like you would be surprised at how much i don't know <laughs> and uh uh, it was just funny, uh, and I, you know, he showed great humility. You know, humility is a funny thing. Uh, I once, uh, I once got a, a medal for being humble, but they took it away because I wore it. <laughs> See, if you think you're humble, you're not humble. So it's uh, humility is a little funny thing, but uh, but I love Matt Frad. He's just one of those guys you just can't help liking. You know, he's just something about him, and uh, I think his humility is is, is part of it. Uh, but I thought to myself, yeah, there's, I bet people wouldn't believe all the stuff I don't know, you know, cause I talk about what I know. I share what I know, my experience of being, you know, an evangelical for 30 years, but I've only been back to the Catholic church for six years. And I came back through the Bible alone. You know, once I learned how to exegete properly, I knew the Eucharist was not symbolic. I knew that Jesus Christ established one church. And, you know, it doesn't take a historian or a, a scholar to figure out what that church is. I mean, you can easily look up the first church and it was the Catholic church, you know. But there were some doctrines that I couldn't really grasp with the Bible alone. But uh, Dr. Fr uh, 
Francis Beckwith, who I had on the show uh, last week in his book, Return to Rome, said, you know, once he established that the Catholic Church was given the authority of Christ, then nothing else mattered. And then, you know, the deeper I got into learning about the church and, you know, I went, you know, you, you, I, I got tired of listening to, not tired, but I said, okay, I'm listening to Protestants tell me what Catholics think. Let me go see what the Catholics actually say. So I went to a Catholic thrift shop and for a dollar, I got a hard cover uh, Catholic catechism and I started reading through. I was like, they believe in grace. It's all grace. And, and, and the more I read it, I was like, okay. And then like Dr. Francis Beckwith said so eloquently, if you look over 2000 years of church history, the Catholic church is just a seamless continuity of history. You know, if you look at what the Bible says and what the church council says and what our Catholic catechism says, it's just all seamless and it all fits in so perfectly. And, you know, I knew the reformers, you know, would refer to the councils, but like Dr. Beckwith said, they would leave stuff out. They would just refer to the parts they agreed with. <laughs> and even today, when you go on their sites, they'll just show you parts that they agree with and the church fathers. You know, it's not like evangelicals today that don't even know anything about the early church councils. They don't even know what a council is, most of them. But, um, but I knew, for example, you know, in the councils in the fourth century, Rome, Hippo, and Carthage, it was the Catholic church that decided which books would be in the Bible. And I seen that the reformers accepted the whole New Testament and most of the Old Testament, but there were seven books they didn't accept. And then I noticed certain other parts of the councils, some Protestants accepted, some didn't. So long story short, I became Catholic, but I still wasn't, I still didn't fully understood. I knew the church was right. I knew God had given the church the gift of infallibility in matters of faith and morals. You know, I understood they could be wrong about science and politics and current events and health. <laughs> but um, when it comes to our faith, our doctrines, our dogmas, they were solid. They never changed. Disciplines, you know, they changed, but nothing was anti-biblical. But doctrines and dogmas, they couldn't change and they never did. And, I, and, and it was proven to me by my own study. So I became Catholic, but I understood, okay, they have the authority and there's just some things that they teach that I don't understand. And I just kind of pushed them to the side. And, um, you know, our Blessed Mother Mary, unfortunately, you know, she was, um, the doctrines about her, I, I didn't understand. And now I understand and, and I'm grateful for her and I love her and I, and I ask for her prayers every day. I talk to her like I would talk to my own mom. And uh, I'm very thankful that our Lord gave us her as our mother. You know, he didn't leave us motherless. We're not orphans. We have a father and a mother. And, um, but I never got around to learning the rosary. And so, um, it was funny because part of me, I realized spiritually, I need to learn it. It's a spiritual weapon that God wants me to use. And I don't have it in my arsenal of spiritual weapons. I mean, I even have a, a woman I respect, the King's lady. She comments on here a lot, really smart lady. And, uh, like me, she was, you know, charismatic evangelical with the gift of speaking in tongues. And, um, she said she thinks that this prayer, the rosary, is more powerful than the gift of tongues in spiritual warfare. And, um, you know, but it's different. You have to learn it. <laughs> you have to take time and learn it. Where the gift of tongues, you know, I just asked for it and I got it. You know, it's, you know, don't believe the hocus pocus you see on TV where you get all emotional and roll around, you know, foaming at the mouth. You know, you ask and you receive, you know, but you got to believe. So, uh, and it's just like a second language. I can speak it just like people that speak, you know, are bilingual. I'm bilingual, but when I speak in tongues, nobody understands me unless there's an interpreter around. So usually I just do it to myself, you know. But a lot of people are telling me, charismatics that have the gift, you know, the, the rosary is a powerful weapon. And, and the king's lady thinks it's more powerful. So, um, so, so I had that desire, um to learn the rosary and then you know we got our fleshly pride i'm like yeah somebody asked me to pray the rosary with them i'm gonna be so embarrassed it's gonna be so embarrassing like we got a youtube a catholic youtube channel you don't even know the rosary 
So yesterday, after church, a couple hours after church, at like three o'clock, two o'clock, uh, our priest had a, uh, a life chain we do every few months, and we, you know, we hold up signs, and um, it's really cool because you know we've always done this, but we've never had a priest that was willing to come out there with us. This new priest is on fire, and he comes out every time and prays with us. And uh, yesterday we had a guest priest from. Um, Jamaica he came out and then there was another priest from Boston and he was down there I'm like god oh, this is so awesome you know this is just and it was really it really meant a lot to have three priests out there with their collars on uh standing for life on the main avenue through my town and uh, as soon as we got out there you had the usual uh people cursing at us this woman screams out f you every baby should be aborted and you know your flesh wants to yell back you know, you should have been aborted, but, you know, God forbid that you would even think that. But, you know, we're our flesh is wicked, <laughs> but the spirit, you know, if you let the spirit take over. So usually I just pray in the spirit. I just pray in tongues to myself in situations like that. But God had other plans. My priest and um, one of the guest uh, priests that were there came up to me and said, Rob, uh, you want to pray the rosary with us? <laughs> uh, we're going to pray in attention for the... Um, for the unborn and also for that girl that just yelled at us uh you know when people are that angry it's because they're hurting and i said father i gotta confess i don't know how to say the rosary and he says well that's good you will learn today so god is funny because i was put on the spot i was embarrassed but i learned a rosary from two holy priests <laughs> and my wife she learned it from matt frad so she came over and joined us and it was beautiful and it is a spiritual weapon. And I told the father, I said, yeah, when, cause you know, more people came up and cursed at us, you know? And, um, and I was like, yeah, this felt like a spiritual weapon. And he told me a story about a priest that got pulled over by the police officer and said, do you have any weapons in your vehicle? And the priest held up his rosary <laughs> and said, this is the only weapon I have, sir. <laughs> so that was a funny story. Um, so yeah, so my confession is, um, I don't know the rosary, but I need to learn it. And, um, you know, I started making excuses to my wife and, you know, she was on point. She don't play, you know, she don't sugarcoat nothing. And she's like, well, you know, things about church history that nobody knows because you're interested in it. You know, when you study it, you know, things about the Bible, you could dig into the Bible for golden nuggets that no one knows about because you're interested in it. She says, if you're interested in learning the rosary and you think it's that important, you'll make it that important. <laughs> and I kept saying, well, you know, my temperament, my personality, I can remember, I literally remember jokes that I used to tell the class in first grade that I tell my grandkids now and they laugh. <laughs> I can remember stories. I can remember jokes. Uh, I read a book. I can remember it when I was talking to Dr. Francis Beckwith. Off air, we were talking about our family. I said, uh, you know, he, his mother was Italian. My mother was Italian. And we got a lot of, um, you know, shady Italian relatives and uh we were laughing about that and uh he's so cool and he was like yeah you know and I I um you know when I was an evangelical I brought uh my cousin who was a pimp to a Liam he, to a Christian uh rock concert and he got saved you know gave his life to Jesus and I said yeah I remember I remember reading the book it's Liam Patella and he's like yeah yeah it was Liam Patella and Liam Patella's like hasn't been around since like the 80s i think the last time i heard him on christian radio but certain things i remember but the rosary is like memorizing prayer you know it's like uh steve ray said he's catholic with a he speaks catholic with a protestant accent i still speak protestant you know i, I I'm, I'm it's just like 30 years like when i pray it was always spontaneous it wasn't like uh prayers you remember and there's there's prayers were given to us by saints holy saints and they're powerful prayers and i know it so like this cool priest I have, he has us at the end of every mass. We say the prayer to St. Michael and it's a powerful prayer. I love that prayer, but I can't memorize it. My, I look at my wife, she's got her eyes closed. I'm like, how do you memorize that prayer? She said, oh, when I used to go to, when I was able to go to daily mass every day, we said it before daily mass, but I just can't, I have a hard time memorizing stuff like that. So pray for me. That's my weakness. And I, and you know, my wife thinks I'm making excuses and I don't know if I am or not. You know, the, the Bible says uh, we can't even trust our own hearts. Our hearts are deceiving. Who can tr who can trust it? I think it's in Jeremiah. So maybe I am, you know, being lazy a little bit, you know, because that's hard for me to memorize stuff. But 
I really want to learn the rosary because, you know, this is spiritual warfare. Yesterday on that pro-life chain that we call, we you could feel the devil attacking us. The devil is getting angry. I mean, another thing Francis Beckwith told me in that interview is he believes Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned. You know, at the end of the, you know, in June, I guess they'll make all their decisions. And the devil's getting mad. You know, you see the Democrats, they're, they're already in, in, and the Democrats in um, New Jersey just passed a law as wicked as the law that uh, Andrew Cuomo signed, allowing abortion through the ninth month because they're afraid um, of Roe v. Wade getting overturned. And all that'll do is bring it back to the States. You know, Florida, they're already talking about 15 weeks, we're, we're going to make it. You know, New Jersey saying nope through the whole nine months and beyond. If afterwards you want to infanticide your child, you can do that. Uh, I mean, th these, these people are sick. We're dealing, you know, this is demonic. We're dealing with spiritual forces. So I really want to have the arsenal that God has given the church and the rosary from many, many Catholics that I respect and love. They're telling me this is a powerful weapon and I need it. You know, it's like going to war without a gun you know so pray for me um there is more i want to say but i'm noticing this store is about to open so i got to get in there but yeah i learned a lot from matt frad <laughs> and uh oh i know what i wanted to say what else i learned matt uh, not only did matt frad you know show me how humble he was with that response and it was i thought it was a funny response but uh, Francis Beckwith, this guy's a scholar, brilliant biblical scholar, political scholar, legal scholar, you know, has been, you know, professor in the most prestigious Christian college in the country for years. Um, but I learned something else that you could be a class clown and then become a scholar. <laughs> Francis Beckwith was genuinely funny. I don't know if you haven't seen it, watch it. My son was like, yeah, I wasn't expecting in, uh, impressions. He did, uh, he did Bill Clinton, uh, JFK and Ronald Reagan guy had a great sense of humor great guy we both had a lot of fun and uh, and he just dropped I'm not gonna even tell you the goal he because he, I'm not gonna be able to say it as good as him but just watch it if you haven't seen it he dropped some really gold nuggets of wisdom on us you know and uh, you know and I'm just you know I say it all the time I'm just a blue collar guy I mean I'm not trying to I'm not just saying it to try and be humble. I'm just trying to be as honest and real with you guys as possible. You know, I'm just a beggar who found a king giving out bread and I want to share it with you guys. And for some reason, God allowed me to talk to some, some great Catholics, Dr. Scott Hahn, Dr. Beckwith, uh, Steve Ray. I mean, I meet these guys and, you know, I'm asking them genuinely, you know, questions that I want to know. And um, hopefully it's stuff you guys want to know too. But, uh, Anyhow, there's my confession. Please pray for me. Um, you know, um, I started this channel and I was only a Christian a couple years and I was just, you know, want to share with you guys evidence in the Bible to uh, defend the Catholic faith. If you're a Catholic, how to defend it to evangelicals because I know the arguments I'll have because I had those arguments. And uh, I started it also to bring evangelicals home to the Catholic Church because, you know, we're called to the new evangelization, bring baptized Catholics home, you know. Sometimes it takes 30 years like me and Dr. Francis Beckwith, but sometimes it doesn't take that long. So never give up faith on your children that have left the faith, your brothers and sisters, your parents. Don't give up faith, you know. I was staunchly anti-Catholic. Uh, Dr. Scott Hahn was even more anti-Catholic than me. So all things are possible to them who believe, you know. So just believe what Jesus says, you know. Pray and love your family back into the kingdom. God bless and stay Catholic.